Hi, this is a tutorial series where I teach you how to make a puzzle game that uses the camera. This whole project is done using only vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas. And a small part of it, this one here, is done using PHP and MySQL to save and load scores from the database. The game works on desktop computers, but also on mobile devices like phones and tablets. By following this series, you'll learn many useful things that you can later apply in other projects. Last time we completed the backend, and now we have a fully functioning game where you can save and load scores from the database. Today we'll make the game look even better by shaping the pieces to look like this. Let's begin. We'll continue with the code from last time. Let me just put Mr. Chibisan here again. Now we're going to do some fine tuning and work on styling the pieces to look like actual puzzle pieces. To do that, we go to initialize pieces function and iterate through the grid of pieces like this. The pieces are stored in a list in this top down and left to right order. So we can get the index of each piece by simply counting here like this. Now we take each piece one by one and i and j will point to the row and column where it belongs. We now need to add information about these things to each piece. Let's call them tabs. For each tab, we need to know if it's an inner tab or an outer tab. We'll decide that randomly with equal probability like this. So this sign becomes either a minus one or a plus one telling if it's going to be an inner or an outer tab. The second thing we need to decide is where will the tab be located on the edge. If we consider this to start at 0 and end at 100%, let's allow the tab to be anywhere between 30% and 70%. Moving too close to the corners is not a good idea. I'll now set this bottom attribute to encode the information for the tab on the bottom. It will be a single number between 0.3 and 0.7 if it's an outer tab, and between minus 0.7 and minus 0.3 if it's an inner tab. Note how we store both pieces of information with this simple trick. If we are on the last row, we don't have any bottom tabs here, so we'll set this to null. We now do the same thing for the tab on the right, and make sure I don't add tabs on the rightmost column. The top tabs are not going to be random anymore, because they need to connect with the pieces from above. We need to set top to be minus the bottom value of the piece directly on top of it. If we're on the first row, we don't have a tab on the top. We now handle the left tab in a similar way. We use the value of minus the previous piece's right attribute. Now let's refresh, make this console bigger, and check here what the pieces array looks like. So the first piece has a positive value here, meaning it should be an outer tab. The right value is negative, meaning it's an inner tab. We have null for left and top, so looking good so far. For the second piece, we need to check if the left value is this number, but flipped. So let's see. Yes, it looks good. Let's check again with the next piece. Good, and now we get right equal to null because we are on the rightmost column. Now the next piece is on the next row, so the top is not null anymore, and it should be the opposite of the bottom of the first piece. Which it is. Good. Let's see the last piece now too. It has null values for the bottom and right, and values for the left and top look okay. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's now draw new shapes for the pieces using this extra information. We won't use the rect method here anymore, but for now I'll just re-implement it using move to and four line two commands. Let me just add comments here to explain where each of these lines is going. 
Now refreshing doesn't change anything. Pieces are still rectangle shaped, but now we have more control over this drawing. I'm gonna need to know the minimum length of the piece and use it to define some visual characteristics of the tab relative to it, like the neck, tab width and height. Now let's first make a detour on our way to top right like this. The location of the tab is given by the absolute value of the top argument. We move on the vertical axis the tab height in the direction given by the sign of the top value. Let's refresh now and see what happens. So pieces look a bit like houses with some kind of roof. For some, the roof goes inward like this. Let me disable drawing of the video for now. It's confusing, I think. So now you just see the shape of the pieces, but you can actually tell that those with the flat roof belong on top. So we start to see that the shape of the pieces really helps when playing the game and makes the overall experience nicer. Let's continue. I'll add similar detours for the other sides as well. We refresh and look at that. We get an interesting division now. I think this could actually be another version of the game if so wanted. It's quite unique looking, I think. What? An error? Where did that come from? Ah, oh, I see. Looks like it happens when I click outside the piece. This here is considered to be outside the piece because we're still using the rectangle shape for hit detection. But the error appears every time I click out here as well. Can't believe I missed that. We need to make sure the selected piece is not null before checking if it's close or not. Okay, no more error. Also, notice how every time we refresh we get different looking pieces. This is really nice, I think. But now let's create the tabs. I'll make two more detours, one before this point and one after it. And we use the value of the neck we defined earlier. Let me now quickly write this for the other sides as well. I now refresh and it looks okay, but you see some of the pieces have some weird lines sticking out. Not all pieces have it. This one is okay because it has tabs on all sides. The problem is that we add these new detours even when an edge doesn't have a tab. We need to check if we need to draw the tab. Otherwise, we just line two to the end of the edge and that's it. I'll quickly add this to the other sides as well. And now... Things look quite good. And notice that because we work with values relative to the size of the pieces, it will work as expected on every difficulty level when this size changes. No need to do anything special here at all. Now, this shape is still not perfect. We need to add some curves. We'll replace this line here with the Bezier curve instead. I'll define it with the help of two control points and this same endpoint from earlier. Looks like something's not right here. I think I'm missing this closing parenthesis. But let me arrange this code better anyway. Refreshing and now you can see what happened here. It makes a curve instead of a straight line. Have you ever drawn shapes using curves? What did you draw? Would be really nice to see some examples in the comments. I'll do the same thing on the right side. I just copy these lines in reverse order and change this minus into a plus here and here. We basically make it symmetrical.
let's test and it looks okay, I think. If you want it to look differently, you can change these values here. Like you can make the neck narrower or you can make the tab wider, for example. You could actually even have different properties for each piece if you want. It's not too much trouble, but I think it's overkill and I'm happy with this being hard-coded here. Notice that this also affected the other tabs now. They are thinner and longer. I will make them all curved next by adding similar code in each of these sections. This is where I would usually say that we should extract a function like draw tab or something. But I couldn't think of good parameter names, and it would actually make some things more complicated inside the function. So I decided to leave it like that. But the advice still stands. Just because I can't figure out how to do it nicely doesn't mean it can't be done. Okay, let's see. Yeah, nice. And again, it works on any size pieces. Now all we need to do is add the video back in. I'll move the code right here. And before it, I call the clip method of the context. And I save the state before the clip and restore it after the call to draw image so it won't affect the following pieces in a weird way. Now some of the pieces look great, like this one but those that have an outer tab are missing the video inside it. We fix this by taking the video with some padding on each side. A padding equal to the tab height is enough. Because the size of the puzzle and the size of the video don't match, we need to scale this tab height for the first four parameters like this. Note that I actually divide here by this size, so essentially I'm simplifying here. It would have been better to store the percent values only, but I noticed this just when editing the video, so now it's too late. Anyway, this works. Or not. Looks like I have an extra parenthesis here. It's supposed to close after the min method here. Now it works, and it looks great. Only thing remaining is to handle when user clicks inside the tabs. The outer tabs are not clickable, and the inner tabs select the piece even when it shouldn't. You would think that it's not a big issue, but if pieces overlap like this, you won't get the piece below it, and it's very annoying. You don't want to annoy your players now, do you? That's it for today. Please like and share this video if you found it useful. Next time, we'll implement pixel-perfect collision detection for the pieces. See you guys.